I've looked at a couple of applications for generating GUI interfaces from the command line, mainly in the form of GTK, but I haven't actually looked at one for generating a TUI interface. Now, a TUI interface is a terminal user interface, something like, say, FCF would be a TUI. The reason why I haven't done this is because usually I'll just use something like FCF, put my data into it, and it works perfectly fine, but if you want something a bit more custom, maybe trying out S-Menu would be a good idea. With this, I could do something like, say, generate a list of all of the files in my home directory, have a little cursor in here that I can use to go and select a file. It gives me 10 seconds to actually go and select a file, otherwise it automatically selects what I'm currently selected on, and when I select something new, it resets the timer, and then when I actually go and select something, it will then go and just print out the thing I selected. Also, it actually shows my dot files and every other file in a different color. The way the developer describes this is by comparing it to sed. It says that sed is an editing filter, whereas this is a selection filter, and honestly, I think that's a pretty good comparison. This can be used to make really, really powerful interfaces. Throughout the course of this video, I'm going to be remaking that script I showed you just before, but the GitHub has some absolutely crazy examples on it, and if you go into the examples folder up here, you can actually see some of those for yourself. I would recommend going and having a look at this one right here though. This one actually shows you how to do submenus, so I'll just cut ahead to when it's actually showing those. So as we can see, we have all of these items here, and if they go and select on one of these items here, it actually opens up a submenu inside of the regular menu. So you could basically make any... So basically, you can make anything you want with this. Is this going to be the fastest interface out there? Absolutely not, but if you just want to smash something together, this is definitely worth checking out. So, before we actually get into the example I want to go through, I just want to mention how to actually use the application in terms of the hotkeys. If I want to go and scroll through the application, both the Vim keys and the arrow keys will work exactly the same way, so J and K to go up and down. If I had horizontal movement here, I could do H and L to move left and right. So let's say I had like a yes, no, cancel on a single line, that would then let me do some horizontal movement. I don't need to explain how arrow keys work though. So if I want to go to the top or the bottom element, that can be done with Control J to go down to the bottom and Control K to go to the top. And if I want to scroll an entire page at a time, so for example, in this case, I actually have more than 10 elements here. If I press capital J, that will then scroll me down an entire page. So now it says 11 to 20. Now it says 21 to 30, so on and so forth. And capital K will go in the other direction. Sometimes you might have a list where it makes sense to search for things. In that case, if you go and press slash, it will freeze your timer if you have one. And then as you start typing stuff out, it'll show you things that match. So let's search for AN. And then once we've got the search the way we want it, if we go and press enter, that confirms our search. And then N will go to the next search. N will go to the next, next, so on and so forth. And then capital N will go in the other direction, exactly like it works in Vim. At any point, we can go and quit out of the application by pressing Q. And if we find something we actually want to select, all we need to do to select it is just press Enter. And that's basically all of the hotkeys. Okay, let's not waste any more time and start building an interface. So the first thing we need to understand is the way that text is separated inside of S menu. So by default, S menu is only going to run in row mode. So no matter what you do, it'll always print stuff out in rows and then work out where the columns goes itself. So let's say we did something like say print F and then hello space world and then a new line character, uh, I don't know, foo bar, sure. And then pipe that into S menu. As we're gonna see, it all appears on a single line. The way we actually go and change this is by passing in the dash C option because the dash C option is the column mode option. So this is going to make it so when we have a space, that will make it on the same row. And when we have a new line character, it starts a whole new row. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to go and remake the interface I showed you at the start. So let's go and run this without the dash C option. And the data I was using just came from running LS dash A. So LS dash A. And this is pretty much unusable. Yeah, you can go and select stuff and sure, I, I guess some things work. But if you have, say, spaces in file names, you get some pretty bad results here. We're going to have to go and address this through a different way. Let's go and try this instead in column mode and see what happens. So here we go. Everything's on its own column now. 
but we still have things being separated weirdly, so we do still have to go and address that. So what we need to change is the word separator, so that is going to be the dash capital W option, and I'm going to set it to a new line character. So if we go and run this now, as we can see, instead of splitting on these spaces, now it's going to be splitting on new lines, and because new lines are also being used to actually put things on their own row, now every single entry appears on its own row instead. I think only seeing five options is kind of a waste, so let's go and address that. The way we do that is with the dash N option, which is basically the number of rows to show on the screen at once. So I believe by default I had it set to 10, but let's go and set it to 20 because I think 20 will look a little bit better. Yeah, 20 definitely works a bit better. Now, even though a timer won't be useful for every single use case, I still think it's useful to show you how it actually functions. So, if we go and pass in the dash X option, or the dash capital X option, this will actually let us set a timeout, and then once the timeout runs out, it's going to do some sort of action, either current, quit, or word. So, current is going to automatically select the thing you're currently on, Quit is going to just quit the application and not select anything. And then for Word, you actually supply an alternate option. And then if you select nothing, it goes and selects that instead. The only difference between lowercase x and capital X is lowercase x will actually show the countdown of the timer as it's running. Now, if you're going to be using a countdown, I would highly suggest just using the lowercase version. So let's go and set it to current mode and set the countdown to three seconds. Now to actually see what has been selected, let's go and put it inside of brackets and run it inside of an echo command so it prints out what we've just selected. So let's go and put our cursor over this one right here, give it a second, and as we're gonna see, prints out what we have highlighted. Now let's go and add a couple of niceties that makes the application just look a little bit better. So I'll move my, uh, my webcam up there actually so you can see what I'm typing. If we go and pass in the dash M option, that will let us go and set a message. So let's say uh, select a file. And if we go and run it like this, as we can see up here it says select a file. Cool. Okay, let's also add the dash capital N option. And that's going to actually add a number to all of the things we can select, but we can't actually go and select the number itself. And also, let's go and hide the scroll bar because we don't actually need to see it. So pass in the dash Q option, and now we have no scroll bar, but we can still go and scroll as we were doing before. Now, it doesn't really make much sense in this situation, but if you pass in the dash S option, you can actually pass in a regex to select a default value. So let's say we want the repos to be the default value. Let's just go and pass in repos. And as we can see, that's automatically selected. Obviously, being a regex, you can have far more complex selections than this. Obviously, being a regex, you can have far more complex selections than this. Now, to do the coloring I did earlier, this application has some built-in color classes. So, those are numbered dash 1 through dash 5. And by default, they all have their own colors assigned to them. And the way we go and use this is pass in a regex value to define what we actually want colored like that. So, let's use number 2 and pass in, say, slash dot. So, this is going to make sure that everything that starts with a dot is going to be colored with the color 2 class. So in this case, that's going to be green. But let's go and pass that in as, say, like, 3 or something. It's going to be yellow instead. I believe 1 is red. And all of these can actually be customized. The way we do it is a little bit confusing, but if you've done any terminal coloring before, it shouldn't be that weird. So after you actually pass in the color class you want to use and what you want to regex, after that, you actually go and pass in the attribute. So in this case, the color is going to be 2, or the foreground color, I guess. The background color is going to be 0, and the text is also going to be bold and underlined. So if I go and run this now, I don't actually have bold fonts working inside my terminal, but the text is underlined, the text is green, and the background color is the same color as my terminal. So I'd recommend going and looking at the man pages for this because it describes all of the different properties you can pass in and how to actually structure the statement. But if you know the syntax, you can experiment around with it and see what it can do. Now, in the case of a column mode interface that has multiple columns, you may not actually want it to operate as a grid. You may just want to lock it to a single row or a single column. Or if you do want to have it operate as a grid, you may just want to have it operate on like a subset of the grid. Like, let's say on the left hand side, you have an ID and you don't want to be able to select the ID. So in this case, what we need to do is pass in the dash capital R or the dash capital C option. So 
R is for row and C is for columns. Even though it doesn't really make that much sense in this interface, passing in dash capital R and one is gonna lock us only to the first row here. And if I go and change that over to dash capital C, now it's gonna do the exact same thing we had it doing before because being locked to column one is the same as having just one column. Here's a couple other examples from the GitHub. So this one right here is going to be for a simple confirmation prompt. Basically it shows a yes, no and a cancel. And then if you go and select one, even though it's not actually gonna output the value, if we had this saved inside of a variable, in this case, we'd see that we selected yes, and then we could actually go and operate on what we wanted to operate on. Or how about we wanna list out all of the accounts inside of our slash Etsy slash password file. So as we can see, we have the root bin, all of these other ones as well. Obviously, this interface isn't really gonna do that much, but if we wanted to go and select something, we could then go and pass that value to something else that actually would do some extra work. All S menu is, is an application to make a simple interface. There are so many other examples I could go through. If I went through all of them, we'd probably be here all day. As always, 66.1% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel, so if you are enjoying the content, there is the subscribe button down below. Clicking that will definitely help out the channel. So. I think that's pretty much everything for me. I think this is a really cool application. I don't know how often I would go and use it, to be honest, because a lot of the stuff I want to do mainly can be done with things like F, Z, F, and D menu, but if you do want something completely custom, I think it's definitely worth checking this out. So, I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David Monster, Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie Joseph, Mitchell, Peter D, Stephen Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, number links down below to my Patreon, Subscribestar, LibrePay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere, and then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch it on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.